This is how we do it. Brain death testing. Brain death is when a person's brain stops working completely and permanently. Comatose patients and brain dead patients may look the same. However, while the comatose patient may have a potential for recovery, brain death is a coma plus. In addition to being comatose, it's also like the brain's computer has shut down and cannot be turned back on. Before testing for brain death can begin, doctors must carry out a series of checklists and evaluation to ensure that the symptoms are not being caused by other factors, such as an overdose of illegal drugs, tranquilizers, poisons, or other chemical agents, or severe underactivity of the thyroid gland. The tools used to help assess brain death are simple and are shown. During the brain death exam, the following steps can take place. Direct observation and evaluation for any responsiveness. Observe the patient for an ample amount of time to confirm no spontaneous movements, responses, or breathing efforts. To evaluate for responsiveness, pressure or pinch is applied to the forehead, chest bone, and extremities to see if there's any movement in response. Occasionally, there are maybe movements seen even after brain death, which are spinal reflexes, similar to when the doctor taps your knee. These movements are spinal reflexes and do not involve the brain at all. They will not change the diagnosis of brain death. Evaluation for brainstem reflexes. To evaluate for brainstem reflexes, the provider will test for the following. Pupillary reflex. Using a pen light, a light is shown into both pupils. A non-reactive mid-size or larger size pupil to bright light is an indication of absent pupillary reflex. Corneal reflex. Using a cotton swab, gently touch each patient's cornea and observe for any reactions, blinking, or eyelid movements. If no such response, this is consistent with absent corneal reflex. Pharyngeal gag reflexes. The provider will elicit a gag reflex by inserting a suction tube or yank hour into the patient's mouth. An absence of gag is an indication of an absent gag reflex. Cough reflex. The provider will do a deep bronchial suctioning using the ventilator machine and an absence of a cough response to deep bronchial suctioning is an indication of an absent cough reflex. Evaluate for oculocephalic or doll's eyes. The provider will slightly turn the patient's head to the right and left or vice versa. Normally, patient's eyes move in the opposite direction of the head movement, which indicates an intact brainstem function. In the setting of brainstem reflex cessation, patient's pupils are fixed with the direction of head movement. Evaluate for oculovestibular or ice water caloric response. The provider irrigates the outer part of the patient's ear with ice cold water for a couple of minutes. This will cause the eyes to deviate towards the irrigated ear, followed by a jerk movement, or nystagmus, to the side opposite of the ear being irrigated. But on a brain death patient, the eyes are still. Apnea test. It is a test for lack of responsiveness to a carbon dioxide challenge. During this part, an initial or baseline arterial blood gas where carbon dioxide and oxygen levels are measured using blood from an artery via an arterial line or a needle stick. The patient is then temporarily disconnected from the ventilator and a small tube is inserted into the endotracheal tube to supply the patient with oxygen. The chest and abdominal wall should be observed for movements suggestive of respiratory effort and the monitor observed for evidence of hypotension or hypoxia. If no spontaneous respiratory effort is observed, an arterial blood gas will be obtained at 8 to 10 minutes. The arterial blood gas is compared with the initial one and if there is a significant rise in carbon dioxide, then apnea has been established. Confirmation of brain death. Finally, in some states or countries, two doctors are required to do the brain death examination to confirm brain death. Once confirmed, the patient can be pronounced dead by brain death criteria and the physician will inform the patient's family or next of kin.